Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 8, Equivalent Ratios to Find Through the Value of a Ratio. Okay, here's exercise one. Circle any equivalent ratios from the list below. All right, so in order for me to realize if something is equivalent or not, we have to know what the value of the ratio is or if we could multiply it by something. So if I take one to two, like ratio number one is, and I multiply it by five, if I multiply both of these by five, I'll just put them in parentheses down here, five and five. One times five is five. Two times five is 10. So therefore, these two ratios are equivalent because they're multiples of each other. Five to, five to 10 is a multiple of one to two. Okay, but if I want to do the same, and I'm just not gonna show my work now, to get from one to six, I have to multiply one times six is six. But in order to make this an equivalent ratio, I'd also have to multiply two by that same number so if I have one to two and I'm multiplying both by six and I'm going to get one times six and two times six is 12. Well, six is okay, but the 16 is not. So ratio one to two is not equivalent to this one. And the same goes for down here. One times 12 is 12, but two times 12 is 24. So there, this ratio one is only equivalent to five to 10. And we're gonna continue doing that for all of them. So now if I go to ratio 5 to 10, to get from 5 to 6, I had to multiply by, so 5 times something equals 6, divide by 5, divide by 5, I have to multiply by 6 over 5. 5 times 6 over 5 equals 6. Because when we do it this way, multiply the numerator times the numerator, the denominator times the denominator, we get 6 over 1, which is 6. So I will need to take 10 over 1 times 6 over 5, and that's going to equal 60 over 5. Okay, and 5 goes into 6 once, and that would be 12. So if I'm going to multiply this 5 by 6 fifths, I'll get 6. If you multiply 10 by 6 fifths, I get 12. 12 is not 16, so these two ratios are not equivalent. Okay, now let me get this out of the way. And then finally, I'm going to do, well, there's going to be two more, I guess. Now to get from 5 to 12, 5 times 12 fifths is going to equal, so if I do it like this, 5 times 12 fifths is going to equal, the fives cancel, it's going to equal 12. So 5 times 12 fifths will give me 12. It's going to be 60 over 5 or 12. So if I take that 10 and multiply it by 12 over 5, then that's going to give me 120 over 5. And 5 goes into 12 two times and then 24 times. And this is not 24. So 5 to 12 is OK, but I didn't get 24. So that's not an equivalent ratio either. So finally, I'm all the way down to the last two. So now I just need to check those. And if I take 6 times 2, I will get 12. And 16 times 2 is 32. So those are equivalent as well. So I will circle those two. OK. Find the value of the following ratios, leaving your answer as a fraction, but rewrite the fraction using the largest possible unit. Okay, so the word value of a fraction, or a ratio I mean, is its lowest, as much as you can reduce it. So the ratio of one to two and a value is a fraction. So we take the first number and put it in as the numerator, and we take the second number and that becomes our denominator. Then we reduce it if possible, but obviously that is not reducible. One half is one half and leave your answer as a fraction, but rewrite the fraction using the largest possible unit, meaning the closest to a whole number or reduce the most, I should say. Uh, largest possible unit, I'm not sure why they use that wording, but they just mean to reduce it. So this ratio, five, ten, 5 to 10, is the five comes first, 
the 10 second. And I know that they're both multiples of 5, so 5 will go into 5 once, and 5 will go into 10 twice. So the ratio of 5 to 10 is equivalent to 1 half. So this is another way of checking what we did up here with less work. And then 6 to 16, take 6 over 16 is our value, and then we reduce it. They're both even, so I can reduce them by dividing by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 16 divided by 2 is 8, so I got 3 eighths. So obviously 1 half is not equivalent to 3 eighths. And then finally, the last one, 12 over 32 is our value, but we have to reduce it. And half of 12 is 6. Half of 32 is 16. They're both still even, so I can reduce again. Half of 6 is 3. Half of 16 is 8. And you do see now that 3 eighths and 3 eighths are the same. 1 half and 1 half is the same. And that's why we have these two circled up here. So then it says, what do you notice about the value of the equivalent ratios? Okay, the value of the equivalent ratios is the same for the, the value of the ratio is the same for the equivalent ratios. Okay, so here's the value. So these are equivalent. Here's the value, they're the same. So these are equivalent. Exercise two, here's a theorem. If A to B with B not equal to zero and C to D is to D with D not equal to zero are equivalent, then they have the same value. So if we take these two ratios and say they're equivalent, they have the same value A over B equals C over D. B and D cannot be zero because I cannot divide by zero be undefined. This is essentially stating that if two ratios are equivalent, then their values are the same when they have values. Can you provide any counter examples to the theorem above? Okay, so what a counter example is, if you look here, counter example, what a counter example is, is an example that makes something not true. So what that means is, can you come up with a value of A over B that is equal to C over D, okay? but they don't that are equivalent but they don't have the same value okay so if you think about that so they're trying to say okay well can you come up with something like up here like these two that are equivalent but when you reduce them they don't have the same value okay um, and actually that is not possible so there is no counter example There is no counterexample. Exercise three. Tavon is training for a duathlon, which is a race that consists of running and cycling. The cycling leg is longer than the running leg of the race. So while Tavon trains, he rides his bike more than he runs. During training, Tavon runs four miles for every 14 miles. So he runs four miles for every 14 miles he rides his bike. So he has a run, runs, let me rewrite that a little neater. It's runs to bike. Okay, runs to bikes. And the ratio is four. 14. It says identify the ratio associated with this problem and find its value. So the ratio is 4 to 14. The value is a fraction with the first number of the numerator and the second number of the denominator. The value must be reduced. These are both even. 4 divided by 2, and let me show that. I'll just put a little divided by 2 here, divided by 2. And when I do that, I'm going to get 2, and 14 divided by 2 is 7. So the value of the ratio is 2 over 7. So now it says use the value of each ratio to solve the following. When Tavon completed all of his training for the duathlon, the ratio of total numbers of miles he ran to total number of miles he cycled, so running to cycling, okay, was 80 to 20, right here. 
So he ran 80 and cycled 280, 80 to 280. Is this consistent with Tavon's training schedule? Explain why or why not. So what this is asking is use the value two sevenths to see if it is equal to 80 over, I'm gonna put a question mark here, 80 over 280. So what you need to do is divide 80 by two and that's 40. So you have to tell yourself, okay, I need to multiply two times 40 to get 80. And so since this has to be the same as this, when it's reduced, I need to be able to multiply this by 40. Okay, I'll use an X here for time so it doesn't look like a point 40. So if I take seven times 40, I definitely do get 280. So the answer is yes, this is consistent with his training schedule. And the reason is this is consistent because the ratio of the number of miles he ran to the number of miles he cycled 80 to 280 has the value of two sevenths, which is the same as the ratio of four to 14. C, in one training session, Tavon ran four miles and cycled seven. Did this training session represent an equivalent ratio of the distance he ran to the distance he cycled? Explain why or why not. Okay, so our value of running to cycling is two sevenths. And he ran four miles and cycled seven. So I wanna know if they're equal. So I'm gonna put four over seven. That's the same as saying four to seven. Okay, he ran four miles for every two seven miles biking. So what do I multiply two by to get four? It's a multiplication by two and I have to multiply the top and bottom by that same two to make sure that this is an equivalent ratio. So two times two is four, but seven times two is 14. So this does not satisfy. So it is not. And why not? Because this training session does not represent an equivalent ratio of the distance he ran to the distance he cycled because the value of the ratio in this instance is four over seven, which is not equal to two over seven. Okay. So the lesson summary says the value of the ratio A to B is the quotient A divided by B as long as B is not zero. If two ratios are equivalent, then their values are the same when they have values. That is the end of lesson eight. Go do your problem set.